Previously, we learned how to manage a new project with edificios, but we also have the powerful project remodeling and renovation tools with the project group working environment. The section allows us to prepare design review and work variations and project comparison with advanced phasing tools to show newly built and demolished elements. As you can see here, when we choose to start working on a project group file, we need to load a previously surveyed building that tags as our current situation building, meaning the status before any rebuilding. Once loaded, the program creates a copy upon which we will start to define our demolished and newly built elements. As you can see, the software has created a design situation and a project group file containing the difference between the two. We have the two status windows. On the left, we have the current situation model, and for the moment, we will not touch this model. And on the right, we have the design stage. This is where we will start to implement our modifications. When the two windows are created, the current situation and the design stage models coincide. Now let's start off from the ground floor. With this button here, we can activate different functionalities. In particular, with this button, we can set up a comparison layout. On the left, we have the current situation, or the surveyed building, and on the right, the design stage model. Looking at the various tools for us to work with, we have the demolisher, with which we can specify elements to be demolished in the surveyed situation that will no longer be present in the design stage. Let's give it a try, and with one click, we will delete this building envelope, and then remove the door. Notice that during the demolition, the elements that are removed from the design situation are highlighted in yellow like this wall. If we consider the demolished doors and windows, we have a red highlighting color, because although we have removed an element. And now we need to build a new wall to fill in the opening. Besides clicking on the single entity, we can also draw section rectangles that allow us to demolish multiple objects all at the same time. A second tool that we can use when dealing with project remodeling is the travel object. This restores entities that may have been demolished by mistake. With the magic wand tool, we can correct the status of entities. This means that entities that are in the current situation can also become a part of the design situation and vice versa. In order to change the current situation, you need to unlock the lock here. Operations in the current situation are not shown in the design stage except through specific function. In the current situation, we can demolish entities that remain only in the current situation. Probably the most important tool here is the magic wand that allows us to make changes to the current situation and also update the design stage. Let's see an example. We will draw a wall in the current situation and to make sure it is updated and gets recognized in the design stage too, we need to click on it with the magic wand. The magic wand works for different entities such as doors, windows, walls and so on. These are the main tasks that we need to complete when working with project group models. Let's see how the other buttons work. With this button, we can activate object coloring for demolish the entities and those that have been rebuilt. With this other button, we have seen that we can set up a comparison layout. We can also deactivate coloring and use this cursor here to move from the surveyed stage to the design stage. With this button, we can associate drawing model. So let's say that the drawing model for the ground floor in this case the design stage corresponds to another drawing model that may have been assigned with a different name in the current stage. Let's also quickly see how to prepare the various drawing models. To create it, we simply use the floor plan object, but then choose either a standard drawing model produced without any color or a comparison drawing model. When inserted, we again set the cutting plane with a night value and confirm. At this point, let's see what we have as a result. 
To access the comparison drawing model, simply activate this first file and click directly on the main floor plan drawing model's nodes. For example, by double clicking on the current stage. So we have a current situation drawing model without any color, but if we click here, we have a color representation. In the design stage drawing model, by clicking here, we can activate the coloring and we can do the same for the comparison drawing model. All of these different representations and drawings must be paginated within the working drawings layout marked with the PG initials. And the drawing models present in the current and the design situations files can always be paginated inside of this group file. Moving on, I wanted to show a brief overview of the 3D magnetic grid and its great potential when used for spatial modeling. To open the 3D magnetic grid, simply enter the object menu and select magnetic grid. In this editor, we can use magnetic grids of various shapes and forms each with different settings. We will start off by inserting a standard model. This can be changed with the following options. We can change the length with the modify length by moving the segment arrow or typing the new value. We can split it into a certain number of parts, typing the number from keyboard. We can add a new object or delete it and for the central models we can change the length while keeping the length of the other segment the same. Then we can choose to change the length with the move option that causes separator elements to move keeping the overall length constant. Clicking on this arrow allows us to add other additional models to the side. We also have other forms of magnetic grid, the cylindrical one also for this it will be possible to divide each single side into several parts, rotate it and clicking on this arrow we can also choose to rebuild that allow us to manage the opening angle of the grid, for example 360 degrees. In the next case we will define how many parts we want to divide our magnetic grid into. In this case we will turn 360 degrees and divide it into 12 parts. And this is our new magnetic grid. Then we can select it and clicking here at the top we can grab the central point so that this cone section also takes a different shape and even here for the overall height we can type in precise measurement. Let's say 8 for this example. Here the helical magnetic grid with various options that we can choose from. Then the trellis magnetic grid with a series of options that we can again modify here according to our needs. For example, we can choose a triangular shape and then confirm. And here we can edit it. 